How do and welcome back. My name is Andrew Hancock and I'm a VMware technical architect from Yorkshire in the United Kingdom. I have worked with the VMware products uh, since their inception in 1998. So that's 23 years I've been working with the VMware product line. Some of you may say if you cut Andy in half, it reads VMware like a sticker rock from Blackpool. I've also written over 100 articles for Experts Exchange and won many other awards and accolades. I am honoured to have been accepted into the VMware vExpert program for the last 11 years and more recently a VMware vExpert Pro for the last two. Welcome back and if you've been following these Hancock VMware half hour videos that I've been doing, um, we are now up to part 15 and this is a continuation of part 14 when I showed you how to perform a P2V of a Windows XP computer to our VMware vSphere Hypervisor 7, our Dell PowerEdge R730. And in the next half an hour, I'm going to show you how we can do a V2V, a virtual to virtual conversion. And we're going to use that virtual machine that we created in part 14, um, where we actually basically created, we shrunk the hard disk from 111 gig down to 90 gig so we currently have a 90 gig virtual machine and I actually promised you in two minutes said that I'm going to show you how to do a virtual to virtual conversion and we're also going to adjust and change the size um, of that virtual machine from 90 gig right down to 30 gig so without further ado I'm going to continue and show you how to do that so I'm going to do one more um, I'm going to do one more conversion and this is called a virtual to virtual conversion so I'm going to go back to our, our virtual desktop computer and I'm going to say shut down here the mouse seems to have gone a bit goofy so I'm struggling probably maybe should have installed VMware tools let's just um, right click console launch remote console what I want to ensure is that I've got a clean operating system because we've not got VMware tools installed uh, I can trigger a shutdown from the menus um, and as I mentioned previously we want to ensure that we've got a clean clean NTFS disk and not a dirty disk because that will actually basically affect our VTV. Okay so the virtual machine is off. Now this is VMware Converter that's actually installed on my local workstation and I'm going to select Convert Machine and Powered Off this time. So I'm going to click the Powered Off Virtual Machine on our VMware Infrastructure Virtual Machine. I'm going to specify the IP address or fully qualified domain name. I'm going to specify the username, root and that password that we set remember in part one. We can click next. There's our virtual machine, the one that we've just P2V, but it's now virtual. So this is a virtual to virtual conversion. And there's a number of reasons why we'd want to do this. Shrinking disks, you've created a virtual machine uh, that has too large a disk and you want to shrink it down. This is a supported method. Um, you could have a virtual machine that's got too many snapshots or a very large snapshot. This is a mechanism that you can use uh, as well. Or to back up. Um, you know, VMware Converter is often referred to as a poor man's backup. So I'm going to click next. And now we're going to specify the same ESXi server to receive the, as the destination to receive the new VM. So again, I log in again. Now that could be um, that could be a different ESXi server, so we're actually basically copying it from one ESXi server to another ESXi server. Uh, or it could be a vCenter server. Um, and I'm going to click next. 
now it's actually asking me for what the destination name is so I'm just gonna use exactly the same name but I'm gonna say uh, shrunk shrink shrunk I know what I'm gonna say 30 G we're gonna we're gonna shrink this disk to 30 G next um, and what I'm going to do this time, I'm actually going to basically send that or copy that to my Rust data store. So it's going to basically copy it from the current data store, which is ESXi007 um, underscore local underscore VMFS6. And it's going to convert that to the Rust data store. And this time I'm actually going to turn around and say, yeah, give me a version 19 virtual machine version. Followed by next. Now, this is exactly the same as we've seen before. Um, install VMware tools, network interface, four gig, two sockets times, one socket times two cores. But this time I'm gonna select, select a volume to copy. And now I'm going to select 30, 30 gig. So it's gonna do a virtual to virtual conversion and it's going to copy that virtual machine and convert it to a new virtual machine, so effectively a clone, but it's going to shrink the disk to 30 gig, all in one operation. So it's going to change the virtual disk size and change the volume slash partition all in one process. And I'm going to click next. There's the summary screen, and I'm going to click finish. And again, it's going to submit the job. And it's going to show me there. That we're running. Now, we should actually basically find that this actually is a little bit quicker. Um, because now, basically, it's copying the information off the data store, the flash data store. But it's actually still copying it to my local workstation and it's copying it back to the SXI server. So my local workstation is connected as a gig. Um, the source file system data store is flash. Um, the destination data store is spinning rust, um, HDD, so that's a bit slower. But we should actually basically expect this conversion to be a lot quicker than, than two hours. And don't worry about it in the uh, post editing of the video, which I'm going to have to do a lot this time. Um, we'll shrink that two hour conversion down uh, to something acceptable, like 20, 30 seconds, um, rather than you watch a, uh, a two hour video. So again, OK, it's telling us it's running 2% complete. Um, it started 152. It reckons it's going to take 57 minutes. But as we've previously seen, that estimated time will change a lot as it starts to basically copy information uh, from the server we're at four percent already and as you can basically see the transfer time 11.35 megabits per second is far faster than what we were copying before uh, i think that physical workstation that we're using had a hundred megabit interface so it's uh, it's much slower but again, it's still a data move operation. It's still a data shunt. These things don't happen quickly. Um, so it's uh, coming up to lunchtime, or it's almost past my lunchtime. So I think I'm going to go away, go away and get some nose bag. I'm going to leave this running, and uh, I'll come back and we'll speed this up in post edit, and uh, then you can base, and then we'll basically finalise with a summary of what we've been doing in this video. So I'll come back shortly. And we're back. Okay, so running time 28 minutes, and I'll uh, speed all this up in the post edit because you don't really want to be having to uh, to watch uh, paint dry. Um, okay, so here's our 30 gig disk that's been shrunk. Remember, of course, if we look at our virtual machine, this was the original. It was a 90 gig disk. I'm going to power that one on and this i don't need to look at it in a minute uh, this is our 30 gig version so i'm going to power that one on and there's no reason at all why um, this should fail because it's an exact clone of 
our original virtual machine uh, and that of course is a clone of our physical machine and just to actually basically show you um, the properties of this I just wanted to show you there that it's an Intel Pentium 4 CPU 3.4 gig um, with 1.5 gig of RAM so that's the physical machine um, and this is the first P to V that we did which was 90 gig and this is I'm going to log in with the remote console on this one because I want to show you exactly launch remote console I want to show you the um, the disk size just wait for that to spin up because remember we've still not installed VMware tools and uh, we've covered that um, in a video uh, so I'm basically just going to because if we actually basically use the the remote console uh, we've got access to the mouse that we haven't got through the GUI um, and if I actually basically just select my computer and there we have it there is our gig disk so there we have it we're done um, we've completed our V to V and at the same time we've actually also used the V to V process to actually shrink um, our virtual machine from a 90 gig disk to a 30 gig disk now I'll put all these articles that I'm referring to in the steps and in the description so that you can actually basically follow them um, we've done an awful lot in two parts, uh, in part 15, which is this one, and part 14. Um, so the two sort of kind of, you know, run side by side. We did a P to V and we did a V to V. And really, there isn't really any difference between a P to V and a V to V other than P to V is what we call um, the conversion process when we convert a physical server or workstation. And a V to V is when we convert... A virtual machine which could be a server or could be a workstation uh, to another virtual machine as far as the conversion process goes and happens um, doesn't make any difference doesn't make any difference whether it's a physical machine doesn't make any difference whether it's a virtual machine VMware converted doesn't know that it's a physical machine it doesn't know that it's a virtual machine it just goes off and looks at the current operating system and the server hardware creates a virtual machine specification based on the number of network interfaces it finds the number of CD-ROM drives it finds uh, the amount of memory that it has the amount of CPUs that it has um, and then it basically just does a file and directory copy file stream bit maybe like ghost uh, from the virtual or physical machine to the receiving destination which is a virtual machine there's one other thing that it actually does at the same time is it actually basically injects the storage controller into uh, the file system, copies it into the file system, and it also basically manually alters the registry to include that storage controller. If you find when you turn a virtual machine on um, that you get a blue screen of death, and you get an in inaccessible boot device that's because there is a mismatch between the operating systems driver in the registry and the hardware which is in the virtual machine there is a mismatch um, and that's clearly one of the reasons why booting um, a virtual machine would fail with a, with a BSOD same thing would happen in a physical environment if you took a hard drive out um, of a machine that had a SCSI controller and put it into a machine that had an IDE and attempted to boot it, you get exactly the same uh, failure with a BSOD. So there's been an awful lot in the whole conversion process. Um, it's all documented. There are some great articles, I do say, 
um, that I've actually basically written around this subject. I and I have written extensively around the VMware vCenter converter standalone uh, products over the years. Um, there's a lot of information to read if you didn't follow the video um, or please ask a related question. So this is my, this completes the first 20 parts of the Hancock's half hour video series. I hope you've enjoyed it and um, I'm now going to start thinking about what we can do in part 21. Anyway, all the best. It's, it's been an absolute pleasure. Uh, so come back in part 21 and uh, you stay safe out there. All the best now. Goodbye.